or high achievers, high and back with six more sissy books. And this one, this was a DNF, another DNF, do not finish. Olivia Oliphant is completely fine, okay, by Gail Honeyman. It was a Costa Book winner in 2017. It was at Kingston University, the big read. I actually got this in a charity shop, but um, yeah, this was a book which was given out free to students each year, okay. And I will read the blurb in the back and try to explain why I didn't finish this book. Eleanor Oliphant leads a simple life. She wears the same clothes to work every day, eats the same meal for lunch every day, and buys the same two bottles of vodka to drink every day. Eleanor Oliphant is happy. Nothing is missing from my carefully timetabled existence, except sometimes everything. This is a debut, and I will respect Gail Honeyman. It's a very, very strong debut. However, I just found it's just too hard to get through. Like, it's, this is how it starts. When people ask me what I do, taxi drivers, dental hygienists, I tell them I work in an office. In almost nine years, no one's ever asked me what kind of office or what sort of job I do. I can't decide whether that's more because I fit perfectly with the idea of what an office worker looks like, or people hear the phrase works in an office automatically fill in the blanks themselves. They're doing photocopying and tapping out a keyboard. I'm not complaining. I'm delighted that I don't have to get into the fascinating intricacies of accounts receivable with them. When I first started working here, when everyone asked anything, we used to know I worked for a graphic design company. Then I was a creative type. It came a bit boring to see their faces blank over when I explained that I was a back office staff and they get used to the fine tipped pens and the fancy software. I'm nearly 30 years old. I've been working here now since I was 21. Bob the owner took me on long after the office opened. I suppose you felt sorry for me, I had a degree in classics and no work experience to speak of, and I turned up for the interview with a black eye and a couple of missing teeth and a broken arm. Maybe you sensed back then that I would never aspire to anything more than a poorly paid office job, that I'd be content to stay with the company and saving the bother of ever having to recruit a replacement. Perhaps you could, also tell, you could also tell I never need to take time off or go on honeymoon or Christmas return to leave. I don't know. On Monday to Friday, I come in at 8.30. I take an hour for lunch. I used to bring in my own sandwiches, but the food at home always went off before I could use it up. So now I get something from the high street. I always finish with a trip to Mark Spence on a Friday, which runs off my week nicely. I sit in the staff room with my sandwiches, and then read the newspaper from cover to cover. Then I do the crosswords. I take the Teddy Telegraph, not because I like it particularly, but because it has the best cryptic crossword. I don't talk to anyone. By the time I bought my meal deal, read the paper, finish both crosswords. The hour is almost up. I go back to my desk and work until 5.30. The bus home takes half an hour. Elizabeth, sorry, Eleanor, I called her, Eleanor Oliphant is a lonely, living a solitary existence. And if you read the book, you get the hints of what happened to her. She is... Lonely. She doesn't understand how the world works about. One bit she goes for a bikini wax, okay, because she does these things to like kind of try to feel normal, but she is just out there. I found this book so difficult to read because the way Eleanor speaks. Now, this didn't make sense to me. Now, Eleanor, I'm going to tell you this now, okay, because I kind of skipped ahead. Eleanor had a kind of like a posh mum, absent father. Eleanor's mum was not all there emotionally. Eleanor's mum set the house on fire, killing Eleanor's younger sister, and scarred Eleanor. Uh, Eleanor then went on to university. Eleanor was 10 when this happened. Eleanor talks really put me off about this book was how Eleanor talks. Eleanor does not know how the world works. Okay. I put it this way, okay? Eleanor is it goes to a department store on page 20, okay, 
and this is this is the chapter. A young man with a grey grey shirt and shiny tie was staring at the bangs of great giant TV screens. I posed in the form then wished to purchase a computer. He looked scared. Desktop, laptop, tablet, he intoned. I had no idea what he was talking about. I haven't bought a computer before, Liam, I explained, reading his name badge. I'm a very inexperienced technology consumer. That was a rocky start. What will you be using it for, he asked, not making eye contact. That's absolutely none of your business. Liam, I said, sorry, I need to simply purchase some sort of computer equipment that I can use in the comfort of my own home in order to conduct some internet based research. I may in time send electronic messages from it, that is all. Do something suitable in stock. A boy stared inwards and thought deeply, a laptop and mobile internet access, he said. Why was he asking me, for goodness sake? I know he'd hand over my debit card. I. I decided I'd go get a pizza. Yes, it was extravagant and indulgent, but why not? Life should be about trying new things, exploring boundaries, I reminded myself. The man on the other end of the line told me that the pizza would arrive in 15 minutes. I brushed my hair, took off my slippers and put my work shoes back on. I wondered how they managed with the black pepper. Would they man bring a pepper mill with him? Surely he wouldn't grind it over the pizza while I stood in the doorstep. I put the kettle on the case and wanted a cup of tea. They told me on the phone how much it would cost. I looked at the money. Put an envelope and wrote pizza pronto on the front. Then Bob already dress. I wonder if it was a dumb thing to tip and wish I had someone to ask. In the end, the pizza experience was extremely disappointing. The man simply thrust a big box in my hand and took the envelope which he re it in front of me. I heard him mutter, F so kind of his breath, as he counted the coins. I bet collected 50 pence pieces in a little ceramic dish. It has seen the most perfect opportunity to use them. Put the extra one in, in for him, but please no thanks on it. Rude. Do you hear the problem with this? With this? this is just 20 pages in. Eleanor went to university. Eleanor has read the classics. Eleanor does not have a laptop. Okay, um, I understand that. Hey, I need my laptop's down. I need a new one. Okay, Ella doesn't own a laptop. Ella doesn't know how the world works. Ella had never bought a pizza. Ella talks like the goddamn Downton Countess from Downton Abbey. Okay, that's what she talks like. And no one sees a call her out in the way she speaks. I mean, if I met someone who talked like a Downton Countess in real life, who was not even thirty years old, I'd be like, where are you from? Where are you from? You know? But yeah, she's so socially isolated. The reason I couldn't get through this book is Eleanor. Because her character does not make sense. Like this bit, this is how he describes, describes her world. Jane the secretary got engaged to a lady as Neanderthal. There's a present for her in that afternoon. I contributed 78 pence to the collection. I'd only had copies in my purse. That was a five pound note. I certainly wasn't going to put in such a extravagant sum into the communal, communal envelope to buy something so unnecessary for someone I barely know. I must have contrib contributed hundreds of presents over the years to all the leaving presents, baby gifts, and special birthdays, and whatever I've ever received in return. My own birthday pass are marked. Whoever had chosen this engagement gift had selected wine glasses and a matching carat. Such a compliment for unnecessary when you drink vodka. Simply is my favourite mug. I purchased it in a charity shop some years ago. It has a photograph of a moon-faced man on one side. He's wearing a brown leather blouse on. And on top of the strange yellow font, it says Top Gear. I don't profess to understand this mug. It holds a perfect amount of vodka. However, therefore, I'm alleviating the need for frequent, re uh, frequent refills. Do you get it? How can someone... In with all her psychological issues, not understand how the world works, not understand how a computer works, not understand social functions. Did she have friends at university? It just makes zero, zero sense. I mean, it's page 85 when you find out that about her face. And this is when it should have been further up in the book, okay? I look at myself again. I was healthy, my body was strong, I had a brain that worked fine. And her voice had been a, a medalist one. Quick inhalation all those years ago had damaged my vocal cords irreparably. I had hair, ear, eyes and a mouth. I was a human woman, no more than no less. Even the circus freak side of my face, my damaged half was better than the alternative, which should have meant death by fire. 
I didn't burn to ashes. I emerged from the flames like a little phoenix. I ran my fingers over the scar tissue, caressing the contours. I didn't burn. Mummy thought I thought. Mummy, I thought. I went through the fire and I lived. The scars on my heart are as thick and disfiguring as those on my face. No, they don't. I just hope some undamaged tissue remained, pattern which love can come and go and flow out, I hope. Yeah. It's like she has no social functions. She's nothing. She's vapid. She's like a ghost in the margins. This bit here. Greetings cards are preposterously expensive given that they're fabricated from a small piece of printed cardboard. You get an envelope with it, I suppose, but still. You'd have to work for almost half an hour in a minimum wage occupation in order to earn enough to purchase a nice greeting card and a second class stamp. This is a revelation. I never actually sent a card to anyone before. No, that will be seeing him tonight, however. I never attached a postage stamp. I was at my humble gift to him in person. I always say who that person is, okay? Don't spoil it. Therein lies a problem. This had the potential be such a great book about a woman who is went through something terrible, socially isolated. However, it felt like Gail Honeyman wrote a character like this for shock. So I was, as I was reading this, I was expecting a moment where this turned into a time travel book. It turns out that Eleanor Oliphant is a goddamn time traveller. Okay, she actually is from like the Roaring Twenties. Fast a hundred years into the future. That's why she talks like this. Or had to be a robot. I was definitely expecting that. This book, everyone seems to go on and on about her. Like, this is really Irish chance. One of the most unusual and thought provoking heroines in the reason can then be fiction. I'll give it that, it is unusual. But the thing is, there's nothing to Eleanor. She's vapid. The way she talks is so off putting. That if she was a bit more low key or down to her, if she spoke in a more typical style, I could have, I could identify with her. I understand loneliness quite well, by the way. I do, I really understand loneliness. However, I cannot finish this book because to see her going through social functions, we don't understand her world around her, or how to use a laptop, or how television works, it appears. Okay? It just became unbearable. So anyway, this was, a, this was a long review actually, or a book I couldn't even finish. So this is why I don't give respect to Gail Hammer. Congratulations on your debut. Congratulations on winning the Costa Book Award. But I physically could not even get through this book. I hope you understand. So I'm signing off here. And bye now. <laughs>